Hello and welcome to this uh, lecture of mechanical vibration. In this lecture, I am going to cover logarithmic decrement. And uh, this is very small and important topic, so I will not spend too much of time. I will try to cover it uh, in a by short briefing. So all we know that when we have a damped system, we know that if the system is freely vibrating, the amplitude will decay with respect to time. And particularly here we are talking about the viscously damped system. So here I am showing the response of your system that if this is my initial disturbance and because of this disturbance system is having response in this way where this axis is time and this is your amplitude. So suppose this is your system where you are having a damper and a spring and the system is the zeta or the damping ratio is less than 1 that means system is under damped system when you will give certain disturbance in terms of velocity or in terms of displacement and you will release your system system will vibrate and its amplitude will decay with respect to time here 1 2 3 n and n plus 1 are number of peaks and I know that the when the first peak will be there I am assuming that time is t1 when second peak will be there I am assuming time t2 the amplitude for the first peak is I am defining by x1 amplitude for the second peak is I am defining by x2 now what is logarithmic decrement logarithmic decrement basically tells us a relation between the reduction in the peaks or successive peak or any ratio of any two peak so if I will write the ratio x1 by x2 as this is under damped system I know that for an under damped system the response is basically we can write that some constant x0 or some constant a a1 e to the power minus zeta omega n t sin omega d t plus phi where a1 and phi are two unknown so if I am interested to write x1 by x2, I can use this expression for x1 where I will put this time will be t1 remaining all the time will be same. When I am interested for x2, I will put this, this a1 will not change because this is not uh, dependent with the time, this is the amplitude. e to the power minus zeta omega n t2 sin omega d t2 plus phi. So this is the value or the response of system for time t1 and t2 where I am assuming that the my amplitude will be x1 and x2 so if I will take the ratio of these two term here I am explaining with the sign you can also take the cost term so this is the ratio and I know here that the two peaks are just the successive peaks so the distance or the time gap between the two will be defined by the time period so I can say that the t2 will be t1 plus the time period which is your damned time period and this damned time period will be 2 pi by omega d where omega d is the damped natural frequency and we have seen earlier that omega d can be right as under root 1 minus zeta square omega natural this, uh, this expression we have already covered in our previous lecture so here I am just going to tell you what is logarithmic decrement so for a damped system the system amplitude will decay with respect to time and I am defining here two amplitude with respect to two time and I am taking ratio of these two when I will rearrange all the term I am getting that x1 by x2 can be written as because I will put here t2 will be t1 plus dt and then I will uh, remove all the term I will eliminate terms like this this will be cancelled out and other terms will be cancelled out finally I am getting this expression x1 by x2 e to the power zeta omega and dt I would re uh, request all the students that you should not uh, mug up all these things because this is not important you just know the philosophy that I am taking the ratio of the two amplitude by putting the response equation when I will rearrange them I am getting this expression where zeta is the damping ratio omega n is the natural frequency and omega d is the damped natural time period when I will put this 2 pi by omega t this would be my expression I, if I will take log at both the side this is my final expression because this omega d can be written as z1 minus zeta square omega n so omega and omega n will be cancelled out and finally I will get 2 pi zeta by 1 minus zeta square and the natural log so this expression tells us define it by the del del is the ratio log of the ratio of the two successive peaks 
that can be used defined by this way and this expression is very useful in experiments basically if you are having a system of unknown damping what you can do suppose you are having a cantilevered beam of this aluminum material and you don't know the damping ratio of this material what you can do you will give certain displacement to this and you will measure the vibration data suppose i am putting an accelerometer here and i am giving some initial deflection to this body so the body will vibrate and i am taking the vibration data using some transducer and ultimately i am having response using some data acquisition system this is the experimental part so in this data acquisition system if you know this peak value and this peak value suppose this is x1 and this is x2 so what you can do you can take x1 by x2 and log off that and by using this expression you can get the zeta value sometime instead of using this 1 minus zeta square as we know 1 is will be much much greater than zeta square so simply we take only 2 pi zeta but normally the actual expression is 2 pi zeta by 1 minus zeta square so this logarithmic decrement is very important to get the damping ratio of a, a, a material which is un, uh, where you don't know the damping ratio value by doing a simple experiment now suppose instead of taking the amplitude of two successive peaks you are interested to take the ratio of this peak and the uh, other peak for example here i am showing that you are interested to take the ratio of second peak and the fifth peak so the formula will become like that 1 by n x log x1 by xn plus 1 is equal to 2 pi zeta divided by under root 1 minus zeta is equal please understand here if it there here n it will be n plus 1 for example that this is 2 and this is 5 so actually you have to count this peak 1 2 and 3 there are 3 jumps so it will be 3 then x2 by xn 2 pi zeta 1 minus zeta square suppose you are taking the ratio of the first one and the fifth one so your n will become what your n plus 1 will be fifth so this will be what you are taking 1 2 3 and 4 so whenever you are doing this formula 1 and 5 so your 5 will be basically your n plus 1 or if you are saying this is the 5 then this is n plus 1 so it will be 4 so if you are taking the suppose you are having this this is your first peak this is your seventh peak so your formula will become 1 by 6 log x1 by x7 is equal to 2 pi zeta under root 1 minus zeta square so please remember these two formula one formula for any successive peaks maybe one or two maybe two or three three or four whatever it will not change anything because if you are having a response like this your first peak second peak third peak and fourth peak you are taking ratio of these two peaks so your x2 by x3 log will be basically 2 pi zeta by under root 1 minus zeta square you are taking 3 or 4 doesn't matter but you are taking 2 and 4 the, then 1 by 2 will be here if you are taking 1 and 4 then there are 3 peaks jump so it will be 3 1 by 3 so please remember this now I am solving one uh, small uh, numerical problem so in this question what is given it is given that the time you have to find the time so this is a little bit a tricky question and you should understand that okay, you have to find the time to when the amplitude reduces by 150 that means if there is a response and first amplitude is defined by x1 your amplitude drops by 150 of this amplitude so what time required that means if i am going to apply my formula so i am going to apply this formula 1 by n log x1 by x n plus 1 will be 2 pi zeta by under root 1 minus zeta square or instead of using this expression as i have said in previous case that we are going to basically uh, take the ratio as we said that we are going to take the ratio and finally this is our formula so this is formula for two successive peaks instead of that if you are having x1 by x n plus 1 the formula will become e to the power zeta omega n and n td so this is the time gap for suppose we are taking the this term and this term so this will tell you this time NTD this is the NTD time so here also I am showing you that that my first and my n plus 1 peak and this would be my formula when I will put this value as x and this value is x by 50 this will be basically my 
expression where n zeta omega n and t d from the given question omega n is given as m is given to you k is given to you and zeta is also given to you so i am going to put all value together and i will get this n t d is the time 1.26 second so what is the time required for reducing the amplitude by 150 the time required to reducing the amplitude is 1.26 second thank you